You're watching Newsday TV special LI Votes 2022 election coverage. I'm Faith Jesse, and it's been a very busy night. Results in Suffolk were delayed because ballots had to be driven to the Board of Elections in Yafank to be tallied. The delay didn't stop Governor Hopeful from declaring victory over Long Island Congressman Lee Zeldin. Newsday TV was there as she addressed supporters. I'm not here to make history. I'm here to make a difference. And because of all of you, we'll keep making progress, breaking down barriers, breaking glass ceilings, helping New Yorkers achieve the greatness that it is capable of. And I will lead with strength and compassion, not with fear and anger. Republican challenger Lee Zeldin is not ready to concede the race. Newsday TV Sherry Einhorn continues our team coverage from the Republican campaign headquarters in Manhattan. Be patient. That is what Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin told a room full of supporters that has since emptied out. Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul may have declared victory, but Zeldin is not conceding the race. He told this crowd there are still more than a million votes from Election Day that need to be counted, including his home base of Nassau and Suffolk counties. Watch what he told his supporters. So, so what's going to happen is that over the course of uh, these next couple of hours, you're going to see the race continue to get closer and closer and closer and closer. Uh, th this includes, by the way, uh, on Long Island, you're going to see a massive victory coming out of Long Island, which will also be closing the gap. So again, as you heard, Zeldin is not conceding the race. He told his supporters that the number separating the two candidates would continue growing smaller and smaller as the hours drag on and on. That is the latest here at Zeldin headquarters in Manhattan. I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. And as we told you, the counting of votes in Suffolk County got off to a very slow start that delayed reporting on many races. Suffolk GOP Chairman Jesse Garcia explained to supporters what happened. The decision has been made that all 1,400 memory cards from each voting machine will be brought back to Yapang and uploaded accurately, properly, so that we have an accurate count of this election. Um, that's going to take some time, quite frankly. As I said, it's going to, you know, we've waited for the better part of almost 25, 28 years to get the results. I know that we share in wanting to get those numbers quickly, but it's best that we get them accurately. So I indulge upon you to enjoy yourself. We're here to have a party, enjoy and socialize. And the moment we have any information, we will come forward and share that with you. And from Suffolk to Nassau, we're going to the Nassau GOP where Republicans are claiming victory in several races. Newsday TV's Jill Wagner continues our team coverage. Well, a big night for Republicans here in Nassau County declaring victory in two congressional races and also three state Senate races. Let's start in Congress. We're talking about District 3 and District 4. Both of those have been in Democratic hands for years, in some cases decades. Uh, in District 3, George Santos declaring victory. He's 34 years old, um, a financier. In District 4, Anthony Diaz Bezito declaring victory. He's a Hempstead Town Council member and also a retired New York City police detective. I spoke to him a little while ago. Here's what he had to say. I think that, uh, you know, if anyone uh, in this district, you ask them, are you better off today than you were two years ago when Joe Biden took office? The answer for most of them was no. Uh, the fact that the Democrats in the state legislature and uh, really all across the country have waged war on law enforcement and law and order, it's been, uh, it's been an issue, especially here on Long Island. We saw it last year when Bruce Blakeman and Annie Donnelly uh, were elected in a, in a county that's, uh, you know, there's a lot more Democrats than there are Republicans. So I think it was just a, a combination of a lot of things. People want to change. They want to see balance in both Washington and in Albany, and that's what we're going to bring them. 
What's priority number one when you get to DC? I think priority number one is to figure out, uh, you know, everyone else that won, see where we stand uh, with the uh, House of Representatives. And on day one, uh, we continue what uh, Leader McCarthy has put forth as the uh, commitment to America. And we roll up our sleeves and get to work in a bipartisan fashion for this nation. As for the state Senate, Jack Martin, Steve Rhodes, and Patricia Canzanari Fitzpatrick all declaring victory as well. The Republicans will be holding a press conference Wednesday morning, they say, to talk about their plans and priorities in D.C. and Albany. In Baldwin, Jill Wagner for Newsday TV. And we're taking you from Baldwin to Freeport. Newsday TV Cecilia Dowd spent the night at Laura Gillen's campaign headquarters, and she continues our team coverage. Well, it was a long night here at Lori Gillen's headquarters in Freeport on the Nautical Mile. It wasn't the victorious night that she was hoping for, but she has not conceded this race for Congress. She spoke briefly. Here's what she had to say. We believe that the race is too close to call. We are going to wait until every vote is counted. It's an extremely close race. There's still a lot of ballots out there. Um, we're really proud of the campaign we, run, we ran. I'm so grateful to all the people who put in so much effort on this campaign, my, my team, my family, labor, all Moms Demand Actions. We're so grateful for your support, and we'll see what happens uh, as the votes are counted. Thank you, everybody. A campaign spokesperson tells me that there are still absentee ballots coming in and they just want to make sure every vote is counted. Again, Laura Gillen has not conceded this race, though her opponent, Republican Hempstead Town Councilman Anthony D'Esposito, has declared victory. I'm reporting from Freeport for Newsday TV, Cecilia Dowd. And now to a local race that's being watched nationally. Political newcomers Robert Zimmerman and George Santos, both vying for the third congressional district left vacant by Congressman Tom Suozzi. Zimmerman, a Democrat, was hoping for a win, but George Santos came out on top. What comes next is simple, is a rescue mission to save our country, to take back control of common sense for our youth, to deliver a quality education, to deliver honest opportunities of employment, to deliver lower cost of energy, to make America energy independent. Let's make sure that we also work on lowering taxes to make sure that people have an opportunity to thrive. Even more important than the results of this evening is our commitment to defending our democracy and our constitution. Yeah. Putting it above partisanship. <laughs> Putting it above partisanship. In this campaign, we lead by example. So this evening, just a few moments ago, I called George Santos to congratulate him. And joining me right now in studio is Newsday Associate Editor Joy Brown. We've been here all night. Time to break down the races. Let's start with the top of the ticket, the governor's race. We're going to pull up a board for you all here. And um, Kathy Hochul took this one home tonight versus uh, Lee Zeldin. Well, you know, they talk about this is uh, at the top of the ticket, a uh, blue wave. Mm -hmm. uh, because not only did uh, Kathy Hochul bring it in, uh, but you also had the Attorney General Letitia James. She declared victory pretty early in the night, or last night, I should say. <laughs> and you also had Comptroller Tom DiNabile, Nassau County uh, son, uh, who will continue again as the state's Comptroller. A blue wave. A blue wave. Uh, the opposite, it seems, in the congressional districts. Let's talk about those. Let's turn it around because it was, in fact, the opposite. Now, now we're going to be talking about the national races later, uh, but on Long Island, it looks indeed as if we did have a, con I would call it a continuing uh, red wave out here. Uh, two of our four congressional seats traditionally mm -hmm. have been Democrat over the past. They're now looks like they're all four are going to be Republican. And right now it looks like we have the first congressional district pulled up. Nicholas Lalota, Republican, pulling the win in that district. Absolutely. 
And in the second district, we have Republican, like you said, Republican Andrew Garbarino, the incumbent in this race. Who becomes the dean if, the, if, if everything holds. He'll be the dean of the delegation. All right, he'll be the dean now. In the third congressional district, we have Republican George Santos, who we were talking about earlier, who won that. And then in the fourth congressional district, another Republican. Anthony D'Esposito, we have not called that one yet because that is in Suffolk, correct? No, we haven't called that one yet because uh, we rely on AP. AP has not called that one yet. Got it, okay. Uh, and Gillen, by the way, has also not conceded. She all, has not conceded. Although D'Esposito has said that he has won. But that race we have yet to call. Okay, well, we will keep it coming in for the numbers. We do want to talk about some of the national races that we were looking at here for the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. Many of folks watching our coverage probably heard a little something about John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. And AP is calling John Fetterman the winner with 50% of the vote. This looked like a very close race, too, here. Well, it did indeed. And uh, it looks like he, it was a squeaker. He got, he got, he got there. Absolutely. Another race we were closely watching, we're pulling it up here. This is the Georgia Senate race. So what's interesting about this race is that these candidates, they have to have 50% of the vote to win. We're looking at the boards here. It doesn't look like either one of those candidates made it that far yet. So we're talking about a runoff, just mm -hmm. like we did, by the way, last time around in Georgia runoff. And it's interesting because for Democrats to maintain, along with the vice, vice president, their majority, they need to win one more race. So if Warnock pulls it off, status quo. If Republicans win this race and another race, it goes the other way. I mean, it'll be really interesting because you're talking about potentially the uh, control or switching the balance of power here. For well, the races. balance of power, and again, uh, for New York with Chuck Schumer <laughs> being a majority leader, I mean, there are implications here as well. He won easily tonight, but we'll see what his position in, in the Senate is as a result of these races. All right. Well, you know, a lot to unpack tonight, Joy, and we're just scratching the surface here. Um, for those of you watching, you can catch all of our coverage right here uh, at Newsday.com or on Newsday TV. Joy, thank you for coming in into the studio. You're watching Newsday TV special election night coverage. Be sure to check out our homepage, Newsday.com, for the very latest numbers from the boards of elections as they continue to update. And we're going to leave you with a sneak peek at Newsday's front page. You can check it out online. Thanks so much for watching. Welcome back to Newsday TV's Live LI Votes 2022 special election coverage. Let's take a look at some of the results that we have coming in. As you know, the numbers have been coming in slowly during the evening. Let's look at the winners first. Now, the winners uh, are uh, Chuck Schumer uh, with 56% of the vote. Uh, he is uh, going to remain the majority leader, Senator. Joe Pinion was defeated uh, by 56-43% and Diane Sayer, the independent, lost there. In the governor's race, uh, you heard Kathy Hochul declaring herself the winner, and uh, AP has declared her the winner now. She is uh, the winner of 53% to 47% uh, in the governor's race. Let's take a look at the first congressional district now. That uh, uh, district is, uh, we have some numbers that, that are uh, e available to us, and the Republican is, uh, uh, been the apparent winner there with 55% of the vote, and that's Nick Lalota, the Republican, Bridget Fleming, the Democrat. In the second district, Andrew Garbarino, the incumbent, is the winner there, um, or apparent winner. Uh, he's got 60 to 40% of the vote there. In the third 
congressional district. Let's take a look at that. The uh, winner is a, and a surprise there is uh, George Santos, the Republican over Democrat Zimmerman. And uh, let's look at the fourth district now. Anthony D'Esposito uh, leading over Laura Gillen. No, uh, uh, no declared winner as yet, but uh, he's leading 52 to 48 percent with 138, almost 138,000 votes there. All right, let's take a look now uh, at uh, those races uh, with uh, our Newsday uh, Bureau Chief in Washington, Tom Bruin. And you've been watching this all evening. Uh, what is your reaction? Drew, um, thanks. I, uh, the House looks like it's going to tilt red. The Senate is up for grabs. It comes down to three states, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. And whichever party wins those two out of those three states at least probably will control the Senate by just one vote. Or in the case of the Democrats, it could be a tie again. And uh, that gives them the majority because the vice president breaks the tie. Now, it's very, very close in the Georgia and Pennsylvania race. The Nevada race, they're still counting the votes. Uh, it, it, it's out west. And so it had a later... Uh, shut down to the polls. So uh, it's uh, it's very likely, or it's very possible, I should say, that it will come down to a December 6th runoff in Georgia, just like it did two years ago. So we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, in Pennsylvania, which is a, a, an incredibly tight, tight race, uh, it's uh, again 49, 48 uh, percent, and there's still about maybe 10 percent of the vote to be counted. So we'll be up late tonight watching this one. Uh, but again, the Senate looks like it's going to come down to these three states, and uh, whoever wins two out of three gets the Senate. Wow, interesting. Razor thin uh, margins on some of these races. Tom. Oh, amazing. It's truly amazing. And it's going to be very interesting to see if there's going to be automatic recounts or how long it's going to stretch out. Um, so we'll, we'll just have to watch for that. And, I, and I, you must expect the challenges to some of these uh, vote counts as well. Well, um, there, it's very likely. Um, but I'm not, in the House, there's going to be some of that as well. Um, but the, the, the big red wave that uh, some anticipated seems to be a little bit smaller. Um, and the, Republic, the, the Democrats seem to have somehow held on to most of their Senate seats, uh, which is quite a feat in a, a midterm election with the president uh, and, and the White House being of the same party. I mean, historically, you just lose a lot of seats then but it seems to be a smaller loss than before. It seems that the uh, the turnout uh, here in New York was uh, extremely strong, uh, and that's unusual for a midterm election, right, Tom? Well, I think that's true. And and around the country, uh, there was big anticipation. And, and one of the reasons is that uh, you can do early voting now. And there was something like more than 40 million people voted early and, and, you know, the total will be around 160 million, something in that range. So that's quite a few people voting early. Yes. Um, and I think just making it easier to vote is, is one of the things that gets people to go actually vote. Tom, uh, thank you so much for your perspective uh, throughout the evening. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Drew. Appreciate that. And uh, you're watching Newsday TV's special election night coverage. Be sure to check our homepage, newsday.com, for the very latest numbers from the boards of election. Our team will be, has been working throughout the night and bring you those results.
welcome back to Newsday TV's live LI Votes 2022 special election coverage. The results are coming in as your ballots are being counted and Suffolk County officials delayed some election night results for state, federal and local races. This happened after a Wi-Fi outage. Well, the decision has been made that all 1400 memory cards from each voting machine will be brought back to Yapang and uploaded accurately, properly, so that we have an accurate count of this election. Um, that's going to take some time, quite frankly. As I said, it's going to, you know, we've waited for the better part of almost 25, 28 years to get the results. I know that we share in wanting to get those numbers quickly, but it's best that we get them accurately. So I indulge upon you to enjoy yourself. We're here to have a party, enjoy and socialize, and the moment we have any information, we will come forward and share that with you. Yeah, and Zeldin's camp says that they are going to wait out until they get those numbers. But the technical problems on Long Island have not stopped Governor Hochul from declaring victory. Let's take a look at the boards here. And we see that uh, the boards say that she is up by 54% with 81% of those precincts being reported. Next, we have the state attorney general race, state attorney general Letitia James declaring victory over Michael Henry. And as we can see with 71% of the precincts reporting, uh, she has 55% of the vote of that race. Next up, we have Democrat uh, Thomas DiNapoli, and he is up at 58% of the vote with 71% of the precincts reporting. The next race we're looking at is Congressional District 2 incumbent. Andrew Garbarino versus Jackie Gordon with 4% of the precincts reporting. That might be off there. He has 71% of the vote. Our next race we're looking at is the U.S. Congress 3rd third, third Congressional District with 75% of the precincts reporting. We have Republican George Santos with 53% in that race. And the final district that I'm looking at is the 4th Congressional District. And we have... 62% uh, precincts reporting, and it looks like Laura Gillen has 51% of that vote, a tight race it looks like there from the ports. Once again, all the numbers haven't come in yet, so we're gonna keep a close look on these races. Let's get out to Manhattan, where Newsday TV's Tiwa Chang is keeping tabs on what's happening at Governor Hochul's campaign headquarters in Tiwa. Not long ago, we saw a very big celebration in that room. It was a very big celebration, but, you know, they uh, they certainly had no idea about what Lee Zeldin was saying. Uh, you didn't see any results from that side at all. They were they took for uh, Governor Hochul's declaration that she had won. They were took it to heart. They they believe she's won. And everyone here, there's no question in their mind that both Governor Hochul won and and also Letitia James. So. Uh, if and when and if the governor is declared the winner, she will be the first woman elected governor of the state of New York. But right now, no one here, they've all left already, they, no one here had any clue that Lee Zelda was going to challenge in any way what she was saying, that she had won the election. So it will be interesting to see what exactly happens if Lee Zelda, in fact, does say that he wins or he didn't lose or exactly how he's going to phrase that and characterize it. But certainly here, everyone here was both happy and relieved that Governor Hochul, in their mind, won because Lee Zelda certainly surged for the last few weeks of the campaign. And I think that ten the initial tension was certainly became relief and, and joy that uh, they believe that Governor Hochul won. Uh, that's the situation here in a pretty empty uh, celebratory room, a lot of confetti on the floor, that's about all. Uh, T.Y. Chang for Newsday New York, back to you. I'm sorry, for Newsday TV in New York. Back to you, Faith. All right, T.Y., thank you so much for your reporting all night. And we're going to talk about now Hochul's challenger. That's Long Island Congressman Lee Zeldin, who did not concede. Sherry Einhorn is live now at Zeldin's headquarters in Manhattan. Sherry, we heard a speech from Zeldin. I actually noticed his daughter, one of his daughters was getting emotional during that speech, but he didn't concede. He said, we're going to wait out and see these numbers come in. What are you hearing now? It still sounds like there's some people back there. Are they waiting it out? Enjoying that open bar? <laughs> Be 
patient, Faith. That is what Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin told a room full of supporters who waited very patiently for him to appear on stage. As you mentioned and as we heard, Governor Kathy Hochul may have declared victory, but Congressman Zeldin is not conceding the race. He told this crowd there are 1.4 million Election Day votes still needed to be counted, including his home base, Nassau and Suffolk County. He is hoping to do well there. Um, you know, he told them that they should be patient. There are people still waiting and watching. Listen to what he told the crowd a little while ago. So, so what's going to happen is that over the course of uh, these next couple of hours, you're going to see the race continue to get closer and closer and closer and closer. Uh, th this includes, by the way, uh, on Long Island, you're going to see a massive victory coming out of Long Island, which will also be closing the gap. No doubt it will be a late night, early morning for Congressman Lee Zeldin, his family, and lots of his supporters. You heard him tell people to be patient. He, in his words, the number between the two candidates will continue getting smaller and smaller as the hours drag on and on. So the race definitely too close to call from the Zeldin campaign. Reporting live at Zeldin headquarters in Manhattan, I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. Faith, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Sherry, for your reporting. Okay, turning now to one of two congressional seats up for grabs in Nassau County. How are Democrats feeling about their chances there? Let's head out to Cecilia Dowd in Freeport. Hey, Cecilia, I know the room is a little empty in there. It's, hey, Faith, it's pretty much just a couple members of the media here and some staff putting the tables back together here in Freeport. I have to tell you, it wasn't the victorious night or a victorious atmosphere that Democrat Laura Gillen was hoping for, but Gillen has not conceded this race for Congress, though her opponent has declared victory. Now, Laura Gillen came out just a short time ago after pretty much almost everyone in the room had left, and here's what she had to say. We believe that the race is too close to call. We are going to wait until every vote is counted. It's an extremely close race. There's still a lot of ballots out there. Um, we're really proud of the campaign we, run, we ran. I'm so grateful to all the people who put in so much effort on this campaign, my, my team, my family, labor, all the moms demand actions. We're so grateful for your support and we'll see what happens uh, as the votes are counted. Thank you, everybody. So you heard it there, and now a campaign spokesperson tells me that there are still absentee ballots coming in, and they just want to make sure everything's counted. So again, Democrat Laura Gillen has not conceded in the race in the 4th Congressional District, so we'll have to see what happens here. I'm reporting live from Freeport for Newsday TV, and I'm throwing it back to Faith in the studio. All right, excellent reporting, Cecilia. Thanks so much for that. Newsday TV's Jill Wagner is over in Baldwin at Nassau GOP headquarters. Hey, Jill, what's the latest over there? Uh, well, Faith, it is uh, just us here and, and the balloons at this point. The remnants, though, of a party, of a big party that the Republicans had, uh, they are declaring victory in those two congressional races, uh, District 3, George Santos, and District 4, Anthony D'Esposito. Uh, D'Esposito, a Hempstead Town Councilman, a retired New York City police detective. I had the opportunity to talk to him uh, a little while ago. Here's what he had to say. I think that, uh, you know, if anyone uh, in this district, you ask them, are you better off today than you were two years ago when Joe Biden took office? The answer for most of them was no. Uh, the fact that the Democrats in the state legislature and uh, really all across the country have waged war on law enforcement and law and order, it's been, uh, it's been an issue, especially here on Long Island. We saw it last year when Bruce Blakeman and Annie Donnelly uh, were elected in a, in a county that's, uh, you know, there's a lot more Democrats than there are Republicans. So I think it was just a, a combination of a lot of things. People want to change. They want to see balance in both Washington and in Albany, and that's what we're going to bring them. What's priority number one when you get to D.C.? I think priority number one is to figure out uh, 
you know, everyone else that won, see where we stand uh, with the uh, House of Representatives. And on day one, uh, we continue what uh, Leader McCarthy has put forth as the uh, commitment to America, and we roll up our sleeves and get to work in a bipartisan fashion for this nation. But again, as Cecilia mentioned, uh, Laura Gill is still not conceding the race. I do want to also talk about the state Senate. Republicans declaring victory in three of those districts. Jack Martin, Steve Rhodes, Patricia Canzanari, Fitzpatrick, all declaring victory as well. Now, tomorrow morning, or actually this morning, uh, there's going to be a press conference. Republicans holding what they're calling um, a winner's press conference tomorrow to talk about their priorities and plans when they get to Albany and to D.C. For now, that is what's happening here at the Nassau GOP headquarters in Baldwin. Jill Wagner for Newsday TV. Faith, back to you. My colleague Drew Scott joining us now with a look at some of those latest numbers. It's been a long night, Drew. How are they looking now? All right, we're going to take a look. Uh, Faith, uh, voters cast ballots for a Long Island State Senate District. So let's take a look. The first state senatorial district, uh, no numbers yet, uh, but um, uh, Palumbo is the incumbent there. Um, and uh, he was challenged by Skylar Johnson, just 22 years of age, in the first district. In the second district, we have uh, uh, Susan Berlin and the uh, challenging the uh, incumbent there, Mario Matera. Uh, again, uh, no numbers, uh, but as you heard, the numbers uh, are starting to trickle in. We'll see what happens there. Now let's move over to the third district, uh, and that is uh, Dean Murray, the Republican, uh, and Farzine Baum is uh, challenging him. Again, no numbers uh, are in is, or counted or officially up on the boards as yet, but we'll see how that goes. In the fourth district, uh, that's uh, Monica Martinez, uh, challenging, uh, challenged by Wendy Rodriguez, the Republican there. Uh, that's in the district there, in, uh, North Bay Shore and Brentwood area. Uh, we, we're going to be watching that one over the next few hours. It's going to be very interesting to see. Now, in the fifth state uh, assembly or state senatorial district, we've got uh, Stephen Rhodes, who is, uh, de has been declared the winner, and he's the Republican there. And John Brooks uh, was, um, it was an open seat, but John Brooks was previously a state senate uh, a senator in another district that was uh, reapportioned. Then the uh, count there, interestingly, was 48,000 to 34,000 votes, or 58% to 42%. A big victory for a Republican there, apparent victory anyway. These aren't official until they're certified. Now let's take a look at the 6th district now, and that's uh, the incumbent um, is uh, Kevin Thomas, uh, and uh, he challenged by the Republican James Call. Uh, there the uh, vote count appears to be 60-40 in favor of the incumbent, the Democrat, uh, Kevin Thomas. Now uh, moving on to the 7th district, um, and that is the district you heard where uh, the Republicans are claiming that Jack Martins is the winner there. The vote count there, 56,000 to 49,000. Anna Kaplan being the Democrat incumbent uh, in, in losing apparently, not officially as yet, but it's 53 to 47 percent in the 7th senatorial district. Now, moving over to the 8th district, uh, that's Alexis Wyke. The Republican and John Alberts, the Democrat, uh, overwhelmingly they're uh, winning 71 percent to 29 percent, 22,000 votes to n about 9,000. Alexis Wyke, the Republican in the 8th district. And finally, in the 9th state senatorial district, uh, we have uh, Patricia Canzanieri. Fitzpatrick uh, is um, uh, way ahead of Kenneth Moore who is the Democrat challenger uh, by a count of 56% to 44% or 35,000 to 27,000 votes. That's the uh, state Senate uh, uh, standing right now on Long Island. We have nine senatorial districts uh, on Long Island. And we're going to talk now uh, to our political analyst, Jerry Kremer. And Jerry, you've looked at these numbers. Uh, uh, we uh, see a lot of Republicans winning there and headed to Albany, uh, apparently. How do you feel about this? Well, it's a, it's, it's a tough night for the Democrats losing two incumbents. And of course, you know, I, I don't know that any absentee ballots are going to change that. 
in addition what was the the Todd Kaminsky seat uh, which is overlaps um, in, in, into a part of Queens it would appear that a Republican also won that seat so the Republicans uh, at this point get bragging rights that they have now deprived the Senate majority leader of the, the ability to override the governor's um, vetoes and of course uh, that's one of the things they salvage from it there's one race up in uh, in upstate New York and Kingston where a Republican incumbent and a Democratic incumbent senators are running against each other uh, and that too might change the complexion. It's not enough to give the Republicans the majority but again it puts them within you know long-term striking distance uh, if anything happened two years from now. But it's a tough night for the Democrats, losing incumbents. But it's clear that uh, if there was a, a purple or wave uh, in Nassau County, uh, it occurred tonight. Um, and uh, I don't think anything's going to change that. And there may be a message to the state Senate that uh, they have to figure out how to be a better player when it comes to redistricting. These people are the victims of redistricting because the legislature went too far and really got hoggish in drawing lines, which turned out once those lines were thrown out and they had an impartial master, that person wound up tilting the districts towards the Republicans. So there's a lesson to be learned that when you control redistricting, do it fairly, you give a little bit to both sides, and maybe you keep a few incumbents. Indeed. All right. Jerry, thank you so much. Uh, we uh, appreciate your perspective. You're watching Newsday TV's special election night coverage. Be sure to check our homepage, newsday.com, for the very latest numbers from the boards of election. And our team uh, working throughout the night, as we have been, to bring you the, the results in the races that affect Long Island.